a lot of people first starting out with SQL have a little bit of difficulty trying to figure out the difference between a join and a union when it comes to deciding when you need to use one of these. When I was first starting out uh, writing SQL, joins were just such a foreign concept to me. And I had a very difficult time wrapping my head around the concept of joins. And then introducing unions and about the same time, it just added another level of complexity and I found myself trying to figure out when I would use one versus the other. And so I'm going to try to give you in this video just some you know, real basic tips for deciding whether it needs to be a, a union or a join and trying to give you the idea of the differences between the two. I'm going to use the Northwind database just so we can make this as cross version as possible so anybody on uh, any version of SQL Server really could run this. Uh, I'm assuming you're on SQL 7 at the very least. And so let's uh, just write a little bit of data up here at the top. Joins and unions can both work with multiple tables and very frequently they both will work with multiple tables. Your joins though are typically going to be used when you need the data from n tables to be in the same row. Okay? So I might have column A for example uh, employees dot employee ID and orders dot order ID and customers dot company name all in the same row and that actually equates to three tables employees orders and customers so I'm taking data from multiple tables but I need that to be in the same row a union statement you have uh, data from multiple tables is going to be in separate rows so I need to, let's say, uh, return a list of our customers, suppliers, oops, and shippers. And each one of those is going to be a separate row. So each is a separate row. So that's the real basic difference between the join and the union. Join takes data from multiple tables and puts it all in one row whereas a union kind of stacks things on top of one another. So let's take a look at a few examples here. We want uh, a report listing the employee who sold oh, the order. Okay. Now we have a couple of different tables. We have the employees table and we have the orders table. And there's actually a relationship between these two. Employee ID is a common column, and employees is the parent table in that relationship. So we start thinking about this, and sometimes it helps you to visualize what you want your result set to be. You want to have something that looks like this, maybe employee ID, uh, last name, order ID, and order date. Because you are taking data from different tables and putting it into a single row, so we get employee ID 1, last name Gavolio, order ID 10248 of January the 1st, 1997. Because these two values, or at least this one comes from employees and these come from orders, they're in the same row, this has got to be a join. It's just that simple. It's going to need to be a join. And we'll just put our join condition on the primary key for and key relationship. So we'll grab the employee ID, the last name, the order ID, and the order date. I'm typing a little fast here. There are other videos up on the website for working with joins. Uh, equals O dot or, yeah, oops, employee ID. Wow, that's a bad way. And let's alias that as E. And when we execute this query, sure enough, you can see that we have the data correct. Now, let's do another query. Our problem statement is, uh, let's see, we want, we'll just do the same thing we did up there. A list of all of our suppliers and shippers 
contact information. And again, visualize this. So our result set is probably going to look like something here. The company name, contact name, and phone. Now, do these three come from one table, or do we need to put these into the same table, into the same row, rather? These are all separate. So I would have a statement like this. Select company name, comma, contact name, comma, phone from suppliers. And then I would have a separate query to do the exact same thing for the other table, from the shippers table. And if I run these two statements, that creates two separate result sets. Did I not have a contact name? Uh, so shippers doesn't have a contact name. So we'll just put in NA. But if I run these two together, it comes up with two separate result sets. And that's maybe not what we want. We might want a single result set. We're printing out a list, for example. And that's where the union statement comes into play. And so we union these. We execute. And let's look for Speedy Express, United Package, or Federal Shipping in this single result set. We come down here. There's Speedy Express. And notice it's not intertwining any of its data in the same row as the shipper or the, uh, rather the supplier information. So hopefully this helps you get a better idea of how joins and unions work. Think of joins as putting columns from multiple tables in the same row.